So today we're here with Landon Feasel. Landon Feasel. Landon, tell me a little about yourself. I'm a 2017 graduate from St. Elmo. I played uh, baseball and basketball there for all four years of my high school career. What was the success you guys had in sports? Uh, basketball, we won the San Juan Holiday Tournament in 2015, and then we were, the 2017, we had two 2A two schools in the tournament. We lost to Vandalia, uh, I don't know what it's two or four points, but we lost real close to them my senior year, and then um, my junior year, we beat Cumberland in the championship to win it, so that was, that was a big deal for us to win our own tournament. It was the first win as a co-op in, in history, the first uh, Holiday Tournament win as a co-op. Who's your parents? Uh, Greg and Lane Feasel. Greg Lane Feasel. Sounds, sounds, like sounds like a good guy, I tell yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Some people know him. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as high school sports, what was your favorite game to be a part of in high school? It had to have been the Santa Mahal Tournament my junior year when we beat Cumberland. That game was, you can't even begin to describe that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the crowd was outrageous. The Santa Mahal, anytime we get in the championship game of the tournament, it is just a packed house. Uh -huh. I mean, we had the stage full and both sides were full. Everybody brought a good crowd and that was amazing. Describe your senior basketball season. It was great. You know, we, we played well. We had a good core group of guys that just worked their tails off. You know, we had Clayton Kroll, who was probably the hardest worker I've ever had the opportunity to play with. I mean, that kid, you, I mean, there's just no describing mm -hmm. the kid. He had a motor that did not stop. And we had a bunch of guys on the team that, that knew their role and executed their role very, very well, which helped us get the wins that, that we got. And you've got to have that. You've got to have a core group of guys that know their role and that do their best mm -hmm. to help the team. And we, we have that. Any dunks you had in high school? I had a few. I had one at Vandalia that was probably my best one. It was a drop step. But I just didn't uh, I didn't have the hops. So I don't know. I, I On a fast break, I might be able to get one down and off the lob. But it was kind of <laughs> hard to get a lob in a high school basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your biggest rival? Uh, it has to be Altamont. You has know, to be Altamont. They, they have a great group every single year. And they've been our rival for years. And unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to, to get a win against them in my high school career, but they had a guy, they had Brian Arm Armstrong and uh, Sam Childerson, and all them guys that were part of the their junior high team that went to the state tournament. I don't remember where exactly they finished, but there was a bunch of studs on that team and they played very well. I mean, it, it definitely hurts knowing that we didn't get to beat them, but, but they definitely were our rival. Talk about your dad, Greg, as your basketball coach in high school. Oh man, you can't beat it. There's, there's, it's, it's awesome and it's bad in the same sense. You know, he was, he was hard on me, which is expected, but it did help in the end. You know, I got a lot of the one-on-one -on -one talkings whenever we got home after a ball game, and uh, that kind of helped propel us forward. You know, as a team and as an individual, he helped me out a ton. As far as your teammates you had in basketball, who was you? Who were you closest with? Um, Clayton Kroll was. I mean, me and him were pretty well inseparable. Um, and then there was just a, a click there within the team, within our starting five with Clayton and Isaac and Lewis Brown and um, Dylan Brooks, mm -hmm. all those guys. And we all kind of just knew what needed to happen on the floor. You know, I could, get, I could get any of those guys to come set a ball screen for me or get them to go to the basket with just a look. There was no, I mean, we just had that kind of connection and that's, it was awesome. Favorite gym to play in? Uh, outside of playing at home, you know, it's obviously your number one is always playing on your home floor. But uh, playing at the NTC in Altamont is just a, it's an experience you can't even begin to describe. So that, describe that week. <laughs> boy, man, that's something you look forward to from day one. You know, in junior high yeah. and in fifth and sixth grade, you go over the NTC tournament, you sit down and you watch games all day long. That's part of it. It's one of the best tournaments, you know, in the state of Illinois. And getting the chance to play in it is just Awesome. You know, we never got the opportunity to play in a championship game, but we did have some nightcap games in the third place mm -hmm. game. And and um, the the atmosphere is just ridiculous. Even whenever the gym's not full, you can't beat the atmosphere. You know, and then you go to the championship games when you've got St. Anthony and Dietrich mm -hmm. playing and the ground's shaking. You know, it is just unreal. You can't even begin to describe it. The way the gym is set up is, is even cooler, too. Oh, Absolutely. It's, it's awesome. It feels like you're playing in the NBA when you step in there. <laughs> <laughs> Any memories from high school that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, we just, uh, I got the chance to play with some of, like, when I was a freshman, I got the chance to play with Levi Maxey and Jacob mm -hmm. Barons, who were 
both 1,000 point scores. You know, um, uh, Connor Beasley. Whenever I was an eighth grader, he was he was a uh, I think he, yeah he would have been a senior that year. That was the the high school sports hadn't co op yet. So mm -hmm. and uh, seventh and eighth grade was the first year of the the co op, and then it went to high school the next year. But Connor was the current rebound holder, and I told him as a as a freshman or as an eighth grader, I was just kind of cocky because I'd been around him my whole life. You know, grew up in the gym with him, and I told him I said Connor, I got twenty bucks that I beat your rebounding record, and. <laughs> Lo and behold, about four years later, it, it did happen. I'm still working my money out of him. I got a, I got a golf scramble with him in a few weeks. I'll get it back. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about uh, playing against Cumberland star Tyson McGee. Boy, that kid was good. You know, he was lightning quick. And if it wasn't for having Clayton, like I talked, you know, he would have really hurt bad. But Clayton was such a good defender that he mm -hmm. really, he really helped to shut him down. And the year we played... Um, when we played Cumberland in the championship, would have been 2015, I believe. They had Gunnar McMeekin was mm -hmm. their was their big star. Tyson didn't really step up and start showing what he could do until the year after, and he was still low. Even even as an underclassman, he was hard to handle. How tall are you? I'm six five. You're six five. Is your family tall? Yeah, dad's tall. Mom's pretty tall, so it kind of does run in the blood. So to find, uh, you had an injury after high school. You were wanting to go to Eureka to play basketball, yeah. but what happened? Uh, we were about two minutes left, uh, somewhere in there in the, uh, we were in the first round of regionals playing Mulberry. And uh, I did a move that I've done probably a thousand times. You know, if I saw a defender standing straight up and not kind of in that athletic stance, I would Euro step between his leg on my first step and then he'd be off balance and I'd go over to my left leg and up and in. Mm. Well, when I planted my left leg, I went down and it, it tore my ACL. And it was a move that I'd done a thousand times. You know, I kind of looked to single out defenders that weren't ready and, and use that. And for some odd reason, you know, that's, it happened that time. And it was, it's a kind of a pain you can't describe. And it's, it's not a physical pain. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. And sitting on the bench helpless, you know, while we played Altamont was not a fun experience. And our guys went out and battled as well as you could expect them to. You know, we were playing Altamont at a shot to go to the regional championship, and they went out and they competed hard. We were we were close at half, and then eventually, you know, you just run out of gas. Especially a team like Altamont, they kind of came into that game sleeping a little bit because they knew that, you know, I wasn't going to be able to play, and our guys capitalized on that well and, and got us in as close as they could, so. What is your current occupation? Uh, I work on the farm. And then I do work at, I work at Kerner's in Effingham right now. I'm kind of just feeling it out, waiting until I can, can get back here to the farm full time, mm -hmm. but it's a little little tough to do right now. How long have you been working at Kerner's? Uh, I've been there about eight months. Eight uh, months. Prior to that, I was I worked construction, so I did, I've done construction all through high school and, and for the first uh, two years out of high school. So since you played basketball in high school, um, what advice would you give to young basketball players? Man, you just gotta put your head down and work. There's, you know, there's a lot of guys now that, you're not, you can't teach work ethic. Mm -hmm. You know, you're born with it. And there's a lot of guys that, that want more than anything to be good at basketball, but they don't go out in the off season and put in the work. I mean, you gotta mm -hmm. be out in your driveway when it's 10 degrees out, shoot until you can't feel your hands and come back in and warm up and go again. Mm -hmm. You know, and you've, you've gotta have that if you want to be a good basketball player. You don't have to be a 30 point scorer. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot of things on the court that help your team, but it all starts with hard work. Who's your biggest role model? Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I grew up, dad was on the state tournament team in 88 and I grew up watching films of that game. And I, in fifth grade, I carried around a bag that had the assembly hall on it that dad got in 1988. That was the bag I took to basketball games because that was just, I was in awe my entire childhood of the fact that little old St. Elmo mm -hmm. made it to the state tournament. And that was when there was only a two class system and <laughs> I was you know, I was pumped up. That was, he had to have been it. What about professionally? Uh, for some reason, it sticks in my mind real bad. I watched a sports science whenever I was probably a freshman of Kevin Love and just mm -hmm. talking about his rebounding ability and how he rebounds. And for some reason after that, it just stuck with me. He was a guy that I followed real close, which unfortunately just kind of fell off the table a little mm -hmm. bit. But at the time, he was a stud rebounder and, and he could score a little bit too. And I kind of tried to model my game after him as much as possible. Final question for you, Landon, I have this. Who's your best friend? Man, we, uh, in baseball, 
um, Drake Hall was our number one pitcher, and he's we've kind of stayed tight since baseball. You know, before sports happened, him and I really didn't even like each other, to be honest with you. And then we played ball together, and here we are. And and he was in baseball. He was our number one pitcher. You know, whenever whenever we got him on the hill, we knew he was going to put us in a good spot mm -hmm. to win a ball game. And which happened, we um, we beat South Central to go to the regional championship, which South Central was a great team that year. They had Brett Harmeyer, Dre Hill, mm -hmm. Noah Palace. I mean, they were juiced. And we beat them, and Drake threw the ball well that game. And then he came back on low rest and pitched against Altamont. And didn't get the outcome we looked for, but he put us in a good shape to, to at least contend for a regional championship. All right, Landon. So you wanted to talk about a few records that you had in high school. Tell me about that. Yeah, I had uh, 1,647 points. Um, which is second in the boys program. Um, Logan Hahn had 1738, I believe. And then I had 964 rebounds, which is the school record. I beat Connor Beasley. Um, Claire Wilhauer is actually the all-time leading scorer throughout the Sam Brownstown sports programs, which she just shattered that record. Um, just an ungodly score. The girl knew how to score the ball. But um, I'm second on the boys basketball list for scoring, which is just, it's, it's special to be that close to some of them greats. And, and I'm, you know, uh, blessed to have had the rebound record and have kind of that, that work hard record to go with it. So now we're here with Landon's dad. Greg Fiesel. Greg Fiesel. Tell me about yourself, Greg. Oh, I farm for a living. Have, uh, have three kids, uh, Landon, Savannah, and Garrett. Garrett's passed away. And, um, uh, Coach for coach basketball on the farm for a living. Where'd you go to grade school? St. Elmo. St. Elmo. You graduated what year from high school at St. Elmo? 1988. 1988. Sports in high school? Played three years of football. Uh, fourth year, they, they uh, dissolved football here. And I played that. Real, that was one of my true loves, actually. <clears throat> and uh, played baseball and basketball. How about your teammates and your coaches? Teammates, you know, uh, those guys are like brothers. You know, I had uh, Kevin Maxey, Ed and Ted Moss, uh, Rob Eckert, Pat Maddox, those guys, you know, and they were uh, like brothers to me. How about coaches? You mean fellow coaches that I know? Uh, I mean, a lot of, you know, I, a lot of the NTC guys now, Tilford Horn was a big, big guy in my mm -hmm. life. Um, uh, of course, Coach Denton, my own coach was. Uh, and I, I just, you know, a lot of guys, that we have right now, you know, that we, we talk a lot of camaraderie there. Gary Shirley was one of the main guys, mm -hmm. too. How did you get involved in coaching? Oh, graduated in 88. In May and July, I was asked by Tilford Ford if I wanted to coach uh, junior high baseball because I was staying home to farm, and I said yes, and he slowly got me back. He said, do you want to do baseball, then basketball? And I said, sure. And, so he and I coached for quite a while together at the junior high level, and I never intended on coaching. I really never did. I didn't even think I'd be good at it because, you know, I just didn't think I could teach the game. I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know if I could get it across to kids. So that was, he was one of the main, my main guys to get me started. How many years have you been coaching? 14 varsity years and 27 altogether. So and wow. that's at different levels, seventh grade, eighth grade, and I was head coach at eighth grade for a while. And I had two different stints. Uh, one stint with uh, Coach Jackson, or Coach uh, Denton as uh, the assistant. Then I took off my, when my first child, Savannah, was born. I took off to be with her. And then I came back and coached uh, with Kevin Jackson. Coaching your son, Landon, what's that like for you? Oh, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not as easy as you would like it to be. Uh, the perception of how things are, you know, uh, favoritism, things like that, we all have to go through. Um, it's a, it was a lot better once we got into our junior, senior year. Um, but, you know, he's a good hard worker, he, you know, played, you know, and we grew up around the game. He knew kind of how I wanted it. And, and by the time we hit our senior year, it was, it was more of a he knew where I stood, he, and I knew where he stood, and we didn't have to talk about it too much after ball games. And and but it was a, it was a joy, it really was. I miss it now, mm -hmm. you know. And especially when you get a little older, you you take a step back and look back and say, "Boy, I sure do miss that." What's your favorite part to coaching? Well, uh, you know, watching kids develop for one thing, 
is a major, but the, the main thing I, I like the most, and I do have, I've always had a great assistant, Ryan Beckhew, and, and we just, we love game planning for people. You know, and we don't always have the most talent in the world, but if you take, we know we love trying to take away from what other teams do. If it works, we look great. If it don't, we look like a bunch of <laughs> idiots. But you know, you know that's that's the main thing. I, I love watching the kids. I like I watch them succeed. You know, uh, you know I'm clearly not in it for the for myself. Or I would have you know quit when Landon was done. You know? So, uh, but no, it's the game plan is a lot of fun. What's your favorite game that you coached? Oh, there's there's a couple. I mean, uh, back Colton Brewer's year, my second year, we beat T Town twice, uh, and that was that was a, that was a lot of fun. Um, one of the main memorable ones is uh, we were two and twenty three, and Diedrich came into our gym, and we had no business whatsoever. And I think they went on to win the sectional or something, and we beat them with the team. And we told them, I said, if you shoot it very, if you shoot it fast, I'm gonna, you're coming out and setting because we're not going to win that way. But that that was a good one. We played Flora uh, Logan my first year with Logan Mahan against Ian Ridge and Coach Lee, and that was a great great matchup for us. And we won that ball game. And then, you know, one of the most satisfying we've we've we played Alamo. We beat them last a couple years ago in a regional with a team that. I just, you know, don't really know how that happened, but, uh, you know, it was in our home gym and that helped a lot. What are some obstacles you face while coaching? Oh, just, I don't know, making sure the kids are enjoying the game, you know. You know, when I first started coaching, you know, it was all raw, 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 you know, get after them, blah, blah, you know, and now, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure the kids are enjoying it. And I tell you, every, every night before we break and hit the floor, I say one of the most important things you can do tonight is go have fun. And, mm -hmm. and when kids stop doing that, then I've done, I'm not doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And making sure, making sure that's, that's, that's the main thing, is making sure those, those kids are having a good time. What's your favorite gym to coach in? <clears throat> oh, besides ours, when it's full on, you know, say the St. Elmo Holiday Tournament Championship Night or Regional, alamont has got to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, how, you know when they're when it's full and, and playing there, whether you're playing out a month yourself or whatever. Um, you know, and the yoga's a lot of fun. You know, when it's packed and 900 degrees in December. <laughs> you know, I, I swear to God, they turn the heat up. It's every, hot. Every time you do it, I told Coach, you know, turn the heat down before I get there. <laughs> <laughs> List of memorable teams you've coached. Memorable teams. Uh, oh, I'm terrible from uh, dates, but I know in 2012 we won a regional. And I think we had back-to-back -back one year there. We had one team there that was below 500 and won the regional. And mm -hmm. that was a year that we, we were just underachievers all year. And I, we kept telling them, if you keep playing, you keep playing. You're going you're gonna to win something special. And they did. But, uh, you know, Coach Landon's team, his last year with Isaac Maxey and, mm -hmm. and Lewis Brown, those guys, they were a lot of fun. They were they were a good group of kids just to have. But uh, the Ben Sperry's, Blaine Scholes, uh, Connor Beasley's, that bunch, they were fun. And Logan and Colton was a lot of fun. I just didn't, I just didn't do as good a job with Logan and those guys because I got them. That was my first year. And I'm coaching the first of July, mm -hmm. and those the, that that if I would have had two or three years with those boys, we could have done a lot of. A lot of damage with those two. So now that you mentioned quite a few players, describe the NTC week in general. Oh, in general, you know, it's it, it's it's nerve wracking because you want to go make a good showing. It's middle. It's kind of a, a big tune up for regional. You know, you got up another month, maybe or a few games after that, and you're right in the thick of postseason. So it's uh, I, I don't know for a fact, but I can't believe there's very many tournaments like it around the state. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a small one a 1A tournament, I just, you know, we've always, you name me how many years, somebody doesn't go to the sectional and maybe win a sectional, you know, they're out of that, out of that tournament. I mean, it's, it's very, very seldom do you have one that doesn't do that. Talk about some of the coaches that are involved in the NTC. Oh, I don't know. I, I, we've had some good ones over the years. I've coached against the Fahrenbachers and those guys over the years and, but Honestly, now you know, with uh, I like I like what we got now because we got guys like John Ebergi, we got Coach Zink down in Louisville, we got Doreen and at South Central and Andrew and 
and, and of course Cody, uh, Andrew there at Neoga and Cody at St. Anthony. But those guys are all young. They'll probably be coaching way before I get done. And I'm, I'm glad to see that. The, it's coaching is, you know, I like to see coaches with passion. And mm -hmm. everybody I named, I mean, you watch the sidelines, you watch them, you know. I mean, some of them can sit still and do fine. <laughs> there ain't very many of those guys I've named that's going to sit still, you know, <laughs> and they get up and, and uh, you know, you know, <clears throat> if you're, you know, they're, by the time of night's over, they're sweating, you know, and, and that's what you, if you show the boys you're going to work that hard, like those boys, like those coaches do, then they'll work for you. Mm -hmm. What is your current occupation? Farm for a living. I work for Red Hawk Propane, a whole propane in the wintertime and uh, coach basketball. Who's your biggest role model? Biggest role model? Um, my parents is, is that's where it's got to start. You know, that's, they've taught me, you know, we just, you know, we were farm family, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, raised cattle all my life. And you, you know, I'd go, I'd come home after school and I'd have an hour's worth of chores and I'd get in and eat a sandwich and I was back to the gym by 6.15. A lot of times I'd roll in right there at that time. I was still in the barn at 5.30. You know, you know, so it's just the way it goes. You know, that is, it was a, it was rough at times, but uh, you know, it's good. It was actually now when you look back on it, that's that's where you learned your toughness. Who's your biggest role model professionally? Oh, well, I don't know. Like I said, I'll probably make people mad. I love Jordan, but <laughs> birds, birds better. Larry Bird's better. I mean, just so, I mean, I just. I'd play ball in the winter time, and I'd come home and I'd watch, I'd watch everything Larry Bird that I could. <laughs> I'd watch everything he did, and uh, you know he's small town kid and didn't have a whole lot, you know, and uh, he worked, he worked his tail off to get where he was. If you weren't coaching, what would you be doing? Oh, I'd be definitely be farming. Farming. I mean, that's 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 my life. Who's your best friend? Oh. Um, Probably my kids, you know, yeah. my kids are, my dad, you know, those, those are, you know, and, you know, you're, you're close, like with Landon, he, he lives here close to me, we're see each other mm -hmm. every day, and my dad too, so, but most generally, you know, my best friend is my dad, and my, right now my dad and, and Ryan, and uh, Landon, and Ryan Becky, you know, we've been together a long time as assistant coach. I can't do this interview without talking about him, mm -hmm. you know, with stuff we do, you know. We do a lot of stuff outside of basketball, but, uh, you know, it's, you know, he's he's a main cog behind a lot of my 14 years of wins. What would your advice give to young coaches out there? Just, you know, you got to, uh, it's, it's funny is, and you don't, you can't favor one kid, but you've got to evaluate all the personalities, and you you got to coach each and every kid just a little bit, a tad different. Some kids you can push hard and get a lot out of them. Some of them you don't have to say too much to, but you got to have discipline. And I mean, it's it's everywhere from the way you know. I, I'm a big guy on appearances, the way you look, mm -hmm. the way you present yourself, the way you walk in a gym. You know, you don't want me to look like a crown. You know, mm -hmm. when you you know walk in a gym, I expect you to look good. You know, and um, you know, make sure that you're teaching these kids. You know, you can X and O it all you want, you can drill them all you want, but they you got to get them to work hard. And uh, if they don't work hard, then there's not a lot of room in my program for mm -hmm. them, and very seldom. You know, and that's what I like going back to these guys we got in the NTC now. I, I, every one of those guys are, are work hard guys, and that's what I like. They work hard, absolutely, yeah. Greg, is there anything you'd like to talk about that we didn't mention in closing? No, just uh, thanks for what you do and cover us. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I know we're over this way a little bit farther than you guys, and, and I, I like the coverage you guys give us, you know, there with you and the radio stations and FM and stuff like that. And I do, I do appreciate all that. All right, Greg, what do you want to mention real quick? Uh, one of the, with uh, Coach Cromweedy out of uh, Diedrich, you know, we always do a lot of talking and scouting and things. And, you know, he does a great job with, uh, you know, with what I was talking about earlier with all the competitiveness and the game planning against us and things like that.